Hi, my name is Sean Beasley and we're continuing along with our OTRS First Steps series. Today we want to talk about the email address. The email address is something very important for the system. First of all, it uh, allows you to personalize your queues, allow your teams to work with one centralized address, and um, also has an added feature when emails come in that um, that they're recognized by the system and they're treated a little bit differently. So here we have a um, OTRS system and I'm going to give this uh, OTRS system then my email address, my first system email address. There's always a default email address in your system when you set up OTRS and as with all the other things we talked about the queues why uh, set them to invalid when you can use them out of the box and email addresses are one thing that you cannot delete because of the concurrency of the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this uh, queue to fit our needs then. For this purpose I've set up a Gmail account so I'm going to go ahead and add my Gmail account here. And this is going to be called my OTRS test system. So this queue setting that I have here will be the queue in which the emails will come into. If they're picked up from a mailbox that has multiple aliases or if they're processed by the postmaster uh, via the proc mail for example when they're sent directly to the OTRS user <clears throat> Otherwise, this queue doesn't have any type of uh, yeah, effect whatsoever. So it's basically whenever um, this email address is found and there's no other default action for this email address, then it will land in this queue. The setting invalid, invalid temporary, invalid, invalid being completely invalid, invalid temporary having the same um, action as invalid, but only being a something to uh, for visual aid for the administrator to know that they were making temporary changes and then valid and then a comment field for uh, the administrators as well when we click submit then you'll see the email address the display name of the email address so this is the portion that usually shows up in quotes the email address usually shows up in the square brackets or the the uh, greater than less than symbols the pointed brackets uh, here's your comments so you could basically if you had a list of email addresses here which most people do um, you can have a comment for each email address to give you a heads up what this email address is for not all of the email addresses in the world say as much as my OTRS help desk a lot of them are very cryptic especially in larger organizations and that's why this comments a good idea to have you also see who changed or <clears throat> when the uh, change was made when the email address was created and if you were to look in the database you would see the user ID for uh, for the change for who, who did the last change and as well who created the uh, database entry and that's the first step in managing your email addresses within OTRS so it's a very small step in the right direction and it's the first thing you need to do with emails now what we did was we had talked about in one of the queues or in the queue session we just did the queue videos that uh, we don't have to worry about the uh, as long as we're only working with queues that need the first system email we don't have to worry about the um, email address being OTRS at localhost because it, it references the ID one so if I go back here to admin and I look into my queues and I go back into my Spark queue which we did in the previous video then I'll see that um, it's already taken the at gmail.com address and some portions of OTRS this might be a little bit confusing because you'll see the change in the front in in the front end but it won't actually be applied because the database is using another value um, but in if we go to the SQL box and we select from Q and we run the query then we will see that here in the Spock um, that I think it's this ID would be the one for the system mail, mail address and it's using one if we were to describe from queues and we would see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 
the 11th field would be the system address ID. If I go back to my browser, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So they're using QID1. There's no permanent value written to the database. That's why as soon as you change this value 1, you're um, automatically sending with the new email address, which is something that you need to take care of uh, in the future when you're maintaining your OTRs, that this could become a pitfall for you if you, main, if you change an email address that's already in the database. So in the beginning, it's a good idea to use these default values, but at the end of the day, when you're maintaining your OTRs, you might want to consider the ramifications of making changes. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.